Okay guys, the first and most important thing you're gonna need to get this emulator up and running is the PlayStation 2 BIOS. Now I can't leave the link to this page in the description below, so you would just have to copy this link here into your browser. Now let's head over to PCSX2.net. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you're here, you wanna go up to the top of the page and click on download. Then you're gonna see stable releases and I am on Windows and the latest version of this emulator as the recording of this video is 1.6.0. Go ahead and click on that. And then you have the option to install installer or portable. We're gonna click installer and your download should start. Once it's finished, let's go up to the top right of your page, click on the three little dots, select downloads, show in folder. We can exit out of the browser and let's drag that installer to the desktop, exit out. Now go ahead and click on that PCSX2 installer. Select the installation mode for PCSX2. We're gonna stick with normal, next. Now you can't see my screen right now because my user account control came up. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Click yes. Select components to install. I'm gonna go ahead and leave start menu shortcuts checked as well as desktop shortcut, next. Now, where would you like for PCS X2 to be installed? For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it on my C drive, which is my desktop. If you guys would like to install this on an SSD or an external hard drive, all you wanna do is go to browse and just locate whatever drive you want to install PCS X2 on. Like I said, I'm just gonna leave it on my C drive for the purpose of this video. Install and finish. Welcome to PCS X2, next. Next, now the emulator wants us to upload a BIOS file. I gave you guys the link to the BIOS file at the beginning of the video. Once you have that file downloaded, I have it here on my desktop, it will come as a file that needs to be extracted. Now what you wanna do, I moved it to my desktop. We're just gonna right click, new folder, and I'm gonna call this new folder PS2 BIOS. And let's move that PS2 BIOS zip file into this new folder, open the folder. Now we are gonna extract this PS2 BIOS file inside of this folder. I use 7-zip to extract my files. If you guys need to download 7-zip, I will leave a link in the description below. Once you have 7-zip installed on your PC, you wanna come back to this file and you wanna right click on the file, go to 7-zip and extract here. And there we are, our BIOS is extracted, exit out. Now let's move back over to the emulator. You wanna uncheck use default settings and you wanna go to browse. We're gonna go to our desktop because that's where we just created that folder and we're gonna search for PS2 BIOS. Right here, select folder. And there we are, our BIOS is uploaded. We have a Europe, Japan and USA BIOS. I'm gonna select USA and finish. Now, if you would ever like to swap out that BIOS file for a new BIOS file, then what you wanna do within the emulator is go up to config, plugin slash BIOS selector, and you can go ahead and browse and find that new BIOS file and upload it to the emulator. Now let's go into our video settings. Let's go back up to config, video, plugin settings. Under renderer, I find that OpenGL hardware works fine with my PC, but if you're having any performance problems with this emulator, I suggest coming back here and playing around with these settings and just trying out different ones to see if your game will perform better. And for the internal resolution, I like to bump mine up to 1080p because I have a 1080p monitor, but if you guys have a 1440p or a 4K monitor, you can't bump it up to that resolution. Just make sure your PC can handle it, meaning you have at least a dedicated graphics card and a four core processor. Everything else here, we're gonna leave at default settings. Okay. Now this next step is gonna be completely optional. It's for anyone that wants to change their aspect ratio. You wanna go back up to config, video, window settings. And where it says aspect ratio, it's gonna be on the standard, which is four by three, which you're gonna have the black bars on the sides. If you wanna change that to a 16 by nine, that'll give you full screen, then you can do so here. I prefer to play that way. I know a lot of people don't with old PS2 games, but it's totally up to you. And if every time you load a game, you wanna go into full screen mode, then you wanna check default to full screen mode on open. 
apply and okay now to set up your controller let's head back up to config controllers plugin settings and let's go over to pad one now i'm going to be using an xbox one controller with this emulator as long as you have a bluetooth connection between your controller and pc this emulator will detect that and for an xbox one controller it's gonna say xi input pad zero now to map out your buttons all you want to do is select the button let's start with the face buttons for an example so if we want to map the triangle i'm just going to click triangle and then i'm going to hit whatever button on my controller i want to be triangle and since i'm using the xbox controller it's going to be y set up the square which i'm going to hit x on my controller circle b cross a for the d-pad repeat the same thing click on up hit up on your controller left left on your controller right and down repeat the same thing for your shoulder buttons your left analog stick and your right analog stick once you're finished go ahead and click apply and okay now we are ready to load up a game let's go up to cdvd iso selector browse go ahead and locate wherever you keep your roms on your pc in my case i keep mine on the external hard drive locate the game you want to load I'm going to load Def Jam Fight for New York, select the game, open, and then you want to go over to system and boot ISO full. And your game should load up.